Lewis Hamilton has perhaps opened the biggest can of worms for a silly season ever. Honestly, by the time I'm done with this video, you will be left confused, wondering if this is even a dream or if this is reality for real, and wondering what is going on and what, is, what are we going to see in 2024 and 2025 that's so insane. Are you ready? Okay. First things first, let's get some facts out of the way before we get into speculation. Carlos Sainz, Carlos Sainz's contract was delayed because a certain someone from Mercedes is moving. And his contract has been finalized for a multi-year deal, so at least two years. I mean, that's crazy. The person who's going there is considered to be the GOAT of all time and is None other than Sir Lewis Hamilton, who spent a decade at Mercedes. So he's partnering Leclerc. Leclerc so reportedly knew about this when he signed his contract. So Leclerc either loves pain or is an absolute, wants to see himself go up against an all-time great. Okay. Okay. But what happens to Sainz? Where does Sainz go? Some people are saying Sainz goes to uh, stake F1 before the deal starts with Audi. Others say Bottas is going to Mercedes. What? Uh, okay. Um, then we're talking about... Uh, all right. Then, then what, what's going to happen? Albon going to Mercedes is also something on the cards. And then... I don't know from where this happened, but suddenly there's reports that Vettel wants to come in for one season. Okay, I, I, okay, I need to calm down and let's go through this step by step from what we know. Leclerc is fixed at Ferrari. Lewis had a contract with Mercedes that he sent there around halfway through the season last season of a one plus one deal, which at the time was set as a two year deal. Okay, fine. All right. His exit clause has been triggered by Lewis Hamilton. And he signed a contract with Ferrari for the seat that is at the moment being held by Carlos Sainz. Carlos Sainz's contract was not done because Carlos Sainz supposedly knew about the contract from Lewis. Okay, so these three guys knew about each other. Mercedes didn't know anything. So they, they are screwed. They were caught off guard. They heard about it 36 hours before the, it was getting released and we found out about it. Okay. So everyone's talking about who's going to replace Lewis and Mercedes. But no one is really talking about what happens with Carlos Sainz because Carlos Sainz is supposedly, okay, he's going to go to Audi. Well, here's the problem. Are we for certain that there's going to be a seat open at Sauber? Are, are we sure about that? No, we're not because, okay, Zhou Guan Yu arguably could be dropped at the end of the season. It would be a shame, but it could happen. But then there is a report of Valtteri Bottas getting the call back to Mercedes. Now, would Bottas want that call? Maybe. But what do you do when you have Teo Porcher, an F2 champion, part of the Sauer Driver Academy? So are you going to be like, okay, if Zhou goes out, are you not going to put in your own Driver Academy guy? Is it worth the money? That Sainz gets in. So it's looking like Sainz is... Sainz's ability to stay in F1 is totally dependent on what happens at Sauber. Which is crazy to think because it's going to be the stake F1 team, the most controversial team of all time, is literally going to decide if anything's going to happen at Mercedes. Well, who's going to Mercedes and if Sainz is going to have a drive for 2025. But, 
let's think, let's talk about this hypothetical. What if Sainz goes to a switcheroo, does a switcheroo with Mercedes and goes to Mercedes? Well, that's not going to happen. Why? Because of like a certain, certain level of reasons. Reason number one. Uh, Sainz has a lot of ability, but it's two drivers in George Russell and Sainz. They both want to be a team leaders. That's not going to happen. Then you've got the fact that Mercedes has Kimi Antonelli in F2, who has enough super license points, but is not yet 18. I'm pretty sure. So he's not allowed to drive yet because of his, literally his age. So they want him to come in and they were piping him up for replacing Lewis at some point. But then you've got also Alex Albon that might want to go in. I personally think Alex Albon is not going to go for it because he doesn't want to go into a team where he's not the team leader and the car is not built around him. And in, at Williams, that is the case. So, let's say Albon is out of the equation. But then who do you put in for 2025 such that Kimi Antonelli can get in? So you're not going to sign Sainz, even if Sainz is okay with it and Mercedes is okay with it, because Sainz doesn't want a one-year contract, right? Unless he gets some kind of deal where he goes to Sauer at the end of 2025 to get into the Audi Works deal. That's possible. I mean, that's insane. That would be crazy, right? That Sainz says okay to a one-year deal because he knows that he has a contract with Audi for 2026. That would be pretty crazy. That would, that would work. Because then Mercedes would have it. As you can see, I'm thinking of this all the way along and it's getting, it's frying my brain, right? It's frying my brain to such an extent that I don't know what to think. This video is probably not gonna have any images in it. I'm sorry for that. There's nothing I can do to keep this concise and make this make sense. Okay, so you're gonna be stuck with looking at my face or listening to me. If you wanna to listen to me, do that, you know, just turn off, just minimize the screen, you know, it's perfect. But oh my God, I, I would really recommend that. Be this is giving me a migraine because I don't know, I honestly think Kimi Antonelli is set for 2025 or 2026. Maybe 2025 if Mercedes wants to take a shot in the dark, which would be pretty cool, but I don't think they will. Mick Schumacher, of course that's possible, it's absolutely possible, but are we sure that Mick Schumacher is not going to be the guy that's going to go to Alpine? Because Ocon's contract is running out as well, and Ocon is probably the most volatile driver to be on the grid for, for Alpine, having quarrels with basically half the grid. And going to Mercedes is not an option, even though he is managed by Toto, because the two hotheads of George Russell and Ocon in the, in the same team they're going to have a battle. They're going to fight it out. They're going to have a falling out. I mean, we're going to have a Rosberg Hamilton situation yet once again. We're just two completely different drivers. And forget it, Mercedes. Mercedes does not want that. So that's a door closed. And then Bottas is in there. I mean, Bottas, would he want to go to the team that kept giving him a one year contract? Unless they give him a two year contract, which they're not going to do because they want Kimi Antonelli into this place. And then, out of all of this, you get Sebastian Vettel being okay with a one-year contract. So we could literally have a situation where a four-time world champion comes back into Formula One to have another go in Formula One for just the one year to quell his thirst for Formula One to be at a German team as a German driver only to leave because there's a new kid on the block that might become a future world champion or is a generational, generational talent. Oh my God. This season, silly, this silly season has already become the craziest silly season I've ever witnessed. And I had not witnessed many, but this is insane. And this all happened because of one driver. Okay, it's one driver moving from one team to another that's causing this entire chaotic situation. We absolutely do not know who is going to be in the Merck's second seat. We just don't know. 
It could be Alba, it could be Vettel, for all we know. It could be Hulkenberg, because also a German driver. Then who goes into the Haas? Oli Behrman? Probably. I mean, that's what they're hyping up. So that's, 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 that's probably the most sensical thing that could happen. Hulkenberg goes to Mercedes, and then we have this thing. But then you have Kimi Antonelli, who doesn't have a drive for 2025, if he gets a F2 championship. Um, then you have Sainz that doesn't have a drive. For at least a season, one full season, and then you don't guarantee that he's gonna get a drive for 2026 because Audi might be like, you know, we have other drivers that are very promisable, and even if Joe Granu gets dropped, Cyber probably wants Teo Pochero to come in, and Teo Pochero, being the, the F2 champion, has some merit. It's not like F2 champions are terrible now. You saw that with Oscar Piastri. So if you get an Oscar Piastri situation with Mercedes, if Mercedes decides to give a two-year contract to Hulkenberg or anybody else who goes into that team, because Kimi Antonelli is like, dude, I want to drive. And then you have another situation like Oscar Piastri where a different team picks it up, which could as well be Red Bull, where they burn Yuki Tsunoda or Danny Ricciardo or Liam Lawson which burns every other Red Bull junior driver. Ugh! This is crazy. And I hope you guys can make sense of this. Give me your thoughts. Tell me your thoughts in the comments because I am so confused and I am so here for it. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more of me freaking out because there's another crazy thing that's going to happen in the next two minutes. And get out of here. Peace out and get out of here, by the way.